Hello friends, welcome back. In this particular video, we are going to see how to calculate the space complexity for a recursive algorithm. Now before starting with the steps for calculating the space complexity for a recursive algorithm, let us try to understand briefly how does recursion work. Now for that I have taken this example. This is a recursive function named foo takes one argument n. Now this particular algorithm or this particular function is recursive because it calls itself. Now in the definition of foo it has been called two times here foo n minus one. Display n will actually print the value of n in the terminal and again it's called again the same function foo is being called here at the end. So this is a recursive function and this is the main function. This is where the foo is being called for the first time at line number 12. These are the line numbers. Understand one thing or remember this one thing whenever recursion happens it happens taking help of a data structure called as stack data structure. This is my stack data structure. You may be aware that stack works in the principle of last in first out. When whatever item is being inserted at the last is the first one to be popped out. So there are two operations in stack that is push and pop operations. Push is to enter something into the stack and pop is to remove the item from the stack. Now in this recursive function remember one thing whenever there is a function call made whenever there is a function call made whether it is recursive or non-recursive you have to enter something into the stack that is you need to perform the push operation. You have to push that function call into the stack. And whenever the function is being executed completely, that instance should be popped out from the stack. So remember one thing, whenever there is a function call, you have to push something into the stack. I will talk about what is that something. And whenever that is being executed completely, that instance of the function, you need to pop out or remove it from the stack. Now what do you push into the stack? Whenever there is a function call made, these are the three parameters that you need to push into the stack. What is the first one is the list of arguments, the formal parameters of that function. So in this case, there's one argument that is n. So that should be pushed for that particular instance. If there's any local variable, that also should be entered into the stack. So in this particular function, there is no local argument. This is a formal argument, formal parameter. There's no local argument and finally if there's a local argument you also have to push the local argument and finally the return address. Once that function instance is being executed completely where should that function return its control to? That's the return address. So these three things combined together that is called as activation record or the stack frame. So whenever there's a function call made the activation record for that function call should be pushed into the stack and whenever that function instance is being executed completely that activation record should be popped out from the stack. Alright so let's take this example and try to simulate this and see how you know push and pop operation happens into this stack. Now remember one thing stack will take some space there is a space requirement for stack each activation record will take certain amount of space. So we need to find out how many such activation records are being created to calculate the space complexity. Now taking this particular function as an example. Now first of all this function executes from main right. Now at line number 12 foo2 is being invoked right. This is being called at line number 12. So whenever there is a function call made, so this is the instance of foo wherever, whenever the value of n is 2. Whenever this function, wherever the value of n is 2, it looks like this particular uh, instance. Now whenever there is a, now there's a function call made at line number 12. I have already told you whenever there is a function call made, you need to make an entry to the stack. That activation record should be entered into the stack. Now foo2 is being called, right? It's been called here. Now control goes here in this particular function. Now this foo2, right? 
the line number three this is this statement if this is two n was two so two this is true right this is true i have told you the activation record should contain the the formal parameters local variables and return address so for for foo2 for this instance i need to enter the the formal parameter in this case the value of n is 2 so n equals to 2 is entered here there is no local variable and the return address once this function is being executed completely where should the control be going back to now for that just remember at line number 12 foo2 was invoked so once foo2 is being executed completely at line number 12 the control should be passed back to line number 12 so once foo2 is being executed completely i need to return to line number 12 so i'll just write return to line number 12 so this is the return address now this is being this is the activation record activation record for foo2 that is being pushed into the stack now i was in this line line number three now this is executed and this becomes true it comes inside now if you look at this at line number five i am making one more call to the function foo but foo2 has other two lines as well line number six and seven is not executed because I call at line number 5 I call foo1 so I need to go here I need to call the same function passing the value of n as 1 now these two values are not being these two lines are not being executed as of now okay so I need to remember right I need to remember these two lines are to be executed for me therefore I have to make an entry to the stack because I need to resume after this is being executed I have to resume from line number 6 and line number 7 so now control goes to now this is in process foo1 is in process now control goes to uh, foo1 function now there's a function call made right foo1 is a function call made with value of n as 1 so whenever there's a function call made i need to push it into the stack so i have an activation record for foo1 entered into the stack now this activation record consists of the parameter n equals to 2 n equals to 2 the parameter no local variable and the return address after this at what line number foo1 was invoked now foo1 was invoked at line number 5 so once this is being executed completely return control should go back to line number 5 so i'll write return to line number 5 okay so and now i'm in foo1 my execution is in foo1 i'm here right now this this statement is true 1 greater than equals to 1 is true now i'll go inside at line number 4 now at line number oh, sorry line number 5 at line number 5 i'm calling foo 0 now i'm making a call to a new function i have already told you whenever there's a function call made push the activation record into the stack so foo 0 so i have to make the entry for foo 0 all right now I have to make an entry for foo zero. Now the value of n is zero, obviously, because n is zero here. And uh, the return address. Now this is called from line number five, so I have written to line number five after this is being executed. So now control goes to foo zero. Now I am in foo zero. I am here. Now just I'll check this condition. Now this condition is false. Zero greater than equals to one is false. So this instance, whenever n becomes zero, this is false. So it comes to the there's no else part. So this is completely executed. Foo zero is completely executed. There's there's nothing to be done. Like if n is zero, this is false. So it will come out of this if and this foo zero is completely executed. It will go to line number nine where it's being completely executed. This is line number nine now once this is completely executed foo zero is completely executed i have told you if the function is completely executed pop that activation record from the stack so i need to now pop this from the stack foo zero should be removed from the stack now control now foo zero tells tells me that after this is being executed i need to give the control back to line number five after written to line number five of 
foo one so this is being removed pop from the stack okay this is being removed so there were three frames created as of now now control go, go goes back to foo one now this is being executed completely right this is being executed completely now control goes back to uh, line number five of foo one so control goes back here now this is being executed completely foo zero now once foo zero is executed completely the next line is line number six says display one now i need to display value one so one is being displayed one is printed as of now and this is also being executed now again there's a call from new function call made at line number seven foo zero the value of n is zero one one more time foo zero instance has been called so i need to make an entry foo zero the value of n is uh, zero now once this is executed i need to return to line number seven here of foo one okay now foo zero again this is called here now foo zero now this is false line number three this is false if this is false foo zero is comes out of if and it reach, reaches line number nine it, it's executed completely if it's executed completely now control should go back to foo zero wherever it was called now control will go back to return to line number seven of foo one so this will be popped out because it's being executed completely so foo zero is popped out control goes back to uh, foo one right in foo one in this foo one now this is being executed to line number seven control goes to line number seven now for this foo one all these lines are executed this is also executed all these lines are executed line number eight line number nine so foo one is done with its execution completely it reaches to last line number nine now if foo one is executed completely i need to give the control back to foo two because i need to if it's if it's executed i need to remove it from this from the stack foo one is being completely executed so i remove foo one from the stack and i give the control back to line uh, five, line number five of foo two so it comes out and control goes back to line number five of foo two so now this is being executed completely foo one is executed completely now foo one is executed completely now it says next line next line number is display two so i display two now again it goes to foo one again foo one is being called here the last one this one so whenever it's called i need to make an entry to this stack foo one the value of n is one and the return address so this has been called at line number seven this foo one is called as line number seven so after execution i need to return back to line number seven so this is the return address now whenever it comes to foo one the control goes back to this function foo one again i check one greater than equals to one is true so i'll just re redo it one more time this is true now it calls to foo zero foo zero so i need to make an entry to for foo zero n is zero and the written address is the written address is uh, line number five now foo zero it comes here now it it's this is already false we have already seen this so this is this will come out from the stack it is popped off from the stack because foo zero is executed now completely and now it returns to line number five of foo one line number five of foo one so this has been completely executed now now it will display one so it is one two one in display one this is done again foo zero is being called so whenever there's a function called made i need to put into the stack foo zero the value of n is zero and it should return to foo zero is called here now after it's being executed completely i return to line number seven this is seven now again comes here foo zero right it's being executed this is false so foo is already being executed nothing to be done because this statement is false so i need to pop this off from the stack and return seven to uh, foo one at line i go to go to line number seven of foo one line number seven of foo one so this has been completely executed now right line number eight line number nine so foo one is completely executed so i need to return to line number seven of foo two so this is popped off line number seven of 
foo two. Line number seven is this. This is executed completely. Now this is done. This is done. So foo two is popped off. Now finally this is popped off. And I return to line number twelve. That is now control goes back to here. That is line number twelve. So this is also popped off finally. And it control goes here. It goes to thirteen and the program stops. The answer for this particular program is one, two, and one. So this is how this is how the 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 sequence sequence of push and pop operation happens. And if you observe this very closely, there are just three activation records needed: this one, this one, and this one. We are actually reusing the same space again and again. So at max, we are needing three activation record space, a space for three activation records. Now each activation record had it had the uh, the variable n. And the return address. So variable n takes. Let's assume it's an integer. It takes four bytes. Four bytes. The address is nothing but a pointer. Again, four bytes. Assuming that pointer takes four bytes. So it's it's taking eight bytes. So eight bytes here. Eight bytes here. And eight bytes here. So I need I need to reserve three. Three space for three activation records. So these are this is the level of how many levels of activation record I need. So I need three. So eight plus eight plus eight. So that is eight into three. That is twenty four bytes. So the space required for this particular recursive function is twenty four bytes. Remember, there is no local variables created here. So it's this is the space required for performing the recursion using stack. That is twenty four bytes. Now, depending upon computer, now this is eight bytes. We are making it specific, assuming that n takes integer takes four bytes. N is integer; it takes four bytes. Assuming that address takes four bytes, it becomes eight bytes for each record frame. But for different computers, it may be different. It may be uh, a different requirement. So we assume that each activation record in this case and it needs k bytes in the memory. So this is just our assumption: k bytes. So if it's k bytes. How many such frames I need? Actually, three. Now, this was the example whenever the value of n was two. If the value of n is two, I need how many? Uh, three activation records. Similarly, if you just look at this, if n is one, I'll be needing two activation records. So for n, I'll be needing n plus one activation records. I'll be needing n plus one activation records. So, if the value of n is two, I need three. So, if it's n, I need n plus one activation record. Each activation record takes k bytes. See, each one is taking k bytes. So, it is space complexity is n plus one into k bytes. So, this is nothing but n k plus k. Now, k is constant. We can ignore this, and this is linear. This is the order of order of n. So I can write asymptotically the space requirement for this function is order of n. This is how we actually calculate the space complexity for a recursive function. I hope this is clear. If you have any doubt in this particular uh, example, you can comment. On this particular video, I'll uh, try to try my best to reply within 24 hours to you, so that uh, your doubt is being cleared. Thanks for watching this video.